2017, 8th of September, 10 p.m. Central European time zone. And late Friday night's Bunter Bleed strikes back. Hello, my friends. Well, um, it was a long, long time, right? So two weeks in Ukraine doing no chess related stuff at all and so on. So I received some messages from you guys and I know that you were missing all this stuff. Uh, you were missing my shows. You were missing probably my son's crying and so on. And you should know that, well, these messages really touched me. And uh, you should know that uh, I also uh, missed all this except for probably my son's crying, because it is always somewhere around. So here we go. Uh, just uh, I'm happy that I come back to active broadcasting after all this. Uh, yeah, not very uh, lonely days, of course, but it felt like that uh, because uh, I'm kind of chess addict. So no chess means no life at least at the moment. So, uh, let us start right now. Uh, so, Training Tuesday comes back on Tuesday next week, and we are going to uh, come up with versatile chess training. Uh, and then uh, we'll probably uh, change the content a little bit. I'm going to uh, actually read carefully uh, the forums, so maybe to pick uh, some interesting ideas from there. Uh, let me know, as usual, what is going on to the sound and to the picture. I do hope that picture is okay, but the sound is usually uh, very, very bad. At least uh, it was so during last three or four sessions. What is it today? Just let me know. Okay. Anyways, let us start. Uh, there are a lot of challenges already, and uh, let us speak, as usual, some guys uh, I have never played before to start with. Just a sec. Unknown identity uh, with very high rating. Uh, the Mac King says, all is okay. Sound is gorgeous. gorgeous. Almost gorgeous. Okay. Accept. Unknown identity. Here we go. I start with white pieces. Okay. Let us try to remember how to play this game, at the very least. D5, so French defense, knight c3. Knight f6, e5, knight e7, f4. This kind of stuff I remember. <laughs> so it's not that hard to recognize this well-known position. And now we have plenty of different plans for black. Um, bishop to e3. So cd4, queen b6, a6, a6. All right. Queen d2, b5 probably. No, bishop e7. Okay, so what is the difference between immediate bishop e7 and including this a6 move? I don't think that castling is good here, because if I castle, then c4 might be annoying. So I'll start with the dc5 move. Knight takes c5. So now castles should be just okay. But probably queen f2 was a bit more accurate. Maybe queen f2 will be good right now. Let us see. Queen f2. Just attacking the knight, intending to play queen to g3. That's my idea. So to bring the queen to the king's side with the temple. Looks very logical, right? Because I do want to attack on the king's side here. Knight a4. I guess there is nothing wrong with taking on a4. 
There is also an interesting idea just to bring the knight to the center using the fact that d5 is pinned. What about just playing knight e4 here? Is it a good idea or not? Let's check it. I'm not quite sure, but feels very, very interesting. So at very least, I'll just put this knight on d6 and after exchange, I'll have pair of bishops. Queen a5, okay. So there is a threat potentially of just taking on b2, right? Can be annoying. Can I play just knight e6 here? But after that, knight e6, bishop d6, e6, exactly knight b2, king b2, queen b4, king c1. I don't think there is a perpetual. So let's just put the knight on d6. At very least, I will grab this very aggressive attacker uh, on the queen side, right? So this dark squared bishop is kind of key piece in the vast majority of cases in the sense of attack of white's king. Uh, without this bishop, I do hope this attack won't be that dangerous. And now if there is nothing decisive, I guess, long term I should be better. Okay, at the moment b2 is under attack. How to protect it? I guess c3 should be considered first and foremost, just attacking the queen and protecting b2 with my queen f2. In case of capture and c3, I just recapture, queen takes c3, king goes to b1, and I think I just have an extra minor piece. Uh, but I might be mistaken because there might be something connected with the perpetual after queen b4 check, um, queen b2 and queen e4, but then queen c2, and if queen e3, then queen c6. Okay, c3 looks like a playable alternative, but d6 is hanging, right? Maybe that is the idea, but well, it's not really something that scares me. So queen d6, okay, I'm a pawn down, but I have some pressure on dark squares. And maybe uh, I'll just sacrifice even one more. Why not? Not sure if it is completely justified, if it is completely correct. But it looks fun, right? Look at this knight on a4. Out of play completely. So check, okay, king b1. And now at some point I want to play even b3, just trapping the knight. That's fine. So pair of bishops. Now b3 traps the knight, by the way. Should I do this? Then e5 is under attack. I mean, my bishop is under attack after e5, so maybe I should start with h4. Attacking the queen, forcing the queen somewhere away from e5 square. That is the key point here. If queen goes to g6, then bishop d3 with a tempo. If queen d8, there is no longer e5. So... It feels like b3 is absolutely good. e5 is forced. I mean, bishop b5 now goes to b6 in this case. But first of all, I regain one pawn, which is not that bad. And get rid of this active knight here. But my opponent decided even to sacrifice the knight. Well, okay. Not against. Now, bishop c5 looks good. Uh, queen to g3 is also an interesting alternative. But queen to g3, all right, that just f6. No, I don't think it is the best thing I can do here. So let's just put the knight on, sorry, bishop on c5. Because bishop b6 leads to queen c3, I guess. Not very good. On the other hand, everything is fine there. Don't know. Let's put the bishop on c5. Attacking the rook. Probably bishop b6 was safer. Intending to play a5. Just closing the queen side more or less. 
but I didn't want to uh, give up the C3 pawn, you know. Okay, so let's take the rook. Oh my god. But I think... Whoa. That is a serious blunder. That is a serious blunder. I thought I had bishop b4 but queen c3. Whoa. That's bad. That's really bad. Okay. Let's just go away with the king somewhere. I don't know where actually. Let's put it here on c2. And I have only 26 seconds. Starts looking very dangerous. <laughs> but I have an extra rook and extra minor piece at the moment. I do hope I'll have enough resources to protect my king somehow. <clears throat> Yeah, serious blunder. But okay. Mm. Just started making random moves, that is a bad sign. No time. Shit. Okay, I'll take this draw offer. Of course, well, I had a winning position, but uh, in this time trouble, I started making stupid decisions. So here I spent a lot of time actually prior to playing King C2 because, well, I saw a lot of, I don't know, um, unpleasant things after bishop b4 and queen c3. And uh, somehow I forgot that I can simply go away with the king. I saw this king a1, queen c3, uh, king c1, queen c3, but forgot about king c2. And then all of a sudden I saw this alternative uh, move, uh, play king c2, but then simply had no time to calculate everything properly. For example, after d4, c4 and bishop e6, most likely there was something uh, better than playing rook to b1. For example, just going away with the bishop somewhere. Um, at the very least, sacrificing it on g7, just uh, making the king a bit more exposed, something like this. Uh, but I was scared a bit by this bishop c4, to be honest. Mm, do know, very complicated position, very complicated position. Um, I guess my sacrifice was absolutely justified here. Having this position was really a pleasure for white. Uh, but I don't know if black played the best way. So castles, h4, okay, queen d8 is more or less forced. All this, I mean, after b3, there was a possibility to play e5 immediately. So after bishop takes e5, there is a possibility to save the knight. But probably uh, from a practical point of view, it was a correct decision just to uh, give up the knight, but to come up with sort of initiative here. Um, again, I'm not sure that bishop c5 was the best move for white here. Bishop b6 was also very interesting. The only thing I didn't like here was queen takes c3. And if my queen uh, goes away somewhere from uh, f-file, somewhere um, that allows black to play bishop f5, there might be a checkmate even. Uh, but, well, I still think that this position is absolutely safe for white. Uh, for instance, uh, queen b2 is always at my disposal. Um, I can put my pawn on a5 here, just closing uh, everything except for the c-file. And I guess extra minor piece um, should be uh, more valuable in this position than black's pawns. But uh, I may be mistaken. have no idea. Okay. Uh, one more guy I didn't play before. Didn't play before. Let's see if we have anybody. Uh, o Toppings from Spain. Yeah, according to 
the history I didn't play against this guy so let's accept the challenge and I'm playing with black all right e4 e5 d4 the scotch or maybe not okay what is that if I play a6 here one of the lines of uh, exchanged Rui Lopez, which is probably not that dangerous. So let's take here. Let's play Bishop D7, preparing castling. Okay, castles. F3. All right. So my pawn is on F7. Does it make a difference? So usually, I mean, in the main line, the pawn is already on f6. Here it is on f7. So there is an interesting idea of um, uh, playing f5 at some point. I can also think of developing my bishop on g7. Typical c5 is also a move here. Let us try c5, just getting rid of the knight in the center. Now just b6. And now maybe f5. I've never played this way. Maybe it's an interesting idea to try it. Just kind of experiment. I don't think it is a good idea in general. But let's try it. Why not? So now I can take on e4 if I want. But what I actually want here is to provoke white to play e5. So let's keep developing pieces. Bishop g5. Okay, let us ask this guy. What did he forget here? I think this sort of stuff makes sense because it helps me to complete the development. So can I just play bishop g7 here? It looks very, very natural. Yeah, I control d5 square, so c5 is protected. Everything is protected. Knight e5 is not a threat because I can take it with my knight. So now I guess I can come up with this interesting. Uh, transformation. Now I wanted to play f4 uh, with the idea of blockading e4 pawn from e5 square with my knight. But I think my opponent will have a chance to play e5 himself, but then e5 will be very vulnerable. Should I play this f4 followed by knight c6, knight e5? I'm not sure, but let's try it again. Just kind of fresh position. I guess to both of us. Now knight c6 or knight g6. Knight g6 is a bit more solid because at the same time with this intention of occupying e5, the knight controls h4 square and additionally protects f4. So multi-purpose. Think now bishop e6 looks good. Rook takes. Now there is an interesting question. Should I exchange rooks or not? If I want to exert real pressure on the king side with my minority attack, I guess I will need the rook there. So let's just avoid the exchange of rooks at the moment. I can come back to this plan at any moment I want. Okay, now the knight goes to e5 with the threat of knight c4 at some point. Okay, so g4 leads to knight d3. And I don't want to exchange 
my knight e5. At the same time, I don't want to play c4 because in this case, um, what happens? d4 square becomes weak. Whew. So maybe bishop c4. Yeah, bishop c4 is interesting enough. Now I can play rook d8. No, I can't. Knight e5, rook d1, knight c4. Rook to f1, trapping the bishop. Wow. That is interesting, yeah. Kind of very unusual tactics. Very nice. A yeah, good game so far. Takes here. And rook f1. If I'm not mistaken, bishop simply has no moves. And it is trapped. I've never seen before this sort of barons. Very good. And I think the king is out of square. Yep. Lost. So a very, very, very good game. Um, interesting one. So to start with, I don't believe that uh, this version of um, <clears throat> exchange variation is uh, dangerous for black. So I guess it makes sense to come up with the main line to force black to play f6 because it reduces black's possibilities. When the pawn is already on f6, there is a weakness of e6 square. There are a lot of uh, different disadvantages of having the pawn on f6. So when the pawn remains on f7, uh, according to uh, the common theory, uh, there is no danger for black. Uh, black is uh, much more flexible in choosing the plan so I decided to play this one. I do believe that uh, it's possible to bring the knight to e7 first, then to g6. There is also possible to play g6, bishop g7, one of the main differences if compared to the setup with the f7, f6. So I played c5, b6, which is also uh, quite normal. And here I played f5. Uh, as I said, uh, during the game, I don't think that uh, it is the best way to play. I guess if white wants to achieve anything, he has to play something like e5, f4, at least uh, achieving this uh, supported, uh, protected passed pawn in the center. So I wanted to grab some uh, control over light squares, usually e6 in this case becomes a good blockading square and so on. Um, so e5, I think is the best reaction after castling knight e7, still e5 looks fine, but bishop g5 is already something dubious. So after uh, h6, especially this bishop h4 gives me a chance to grab the space and to complete the development. And now you no longer have a chance to play e5 because I have this f5, f4. After bishop g7, there is a positional threat of uh, damaging the pawn structure. Uh, so I do believe that uh, the best move was knight to d5, where after um, I wanted to take because c7 is hanging and my knight on e7 at the same time. And here white has a chance to recapture with the pawn um, I'm not sure what is the um, evaluation of this position. I sh think that black already slightly better, uh, should be at least. So after f4, bishop f2, and let's say, I don't even know, bishop somewhere to f5 or b5, both look very tempting. Um, with future pressure against d5 pawn and uh, some play on the king side in the center, uh, well, at very least, black has no problems anymore with the pawn structure. Uh, it is equally good for both sides, maybe slightly uh, better for black, because white definitely has um, some uh, vulnerabilities here, and uh, I can't see uh, any serious weakness in black's camp. So that's the point. Okay, uh, here we go. One more against the one 
I didn't play before. And then we come back to the normal order of challenges. So the guy from Mexico, Rodrigo, let's do it. Accept. And black pieces again. All right. D4, knight of six. So something closed. C4, E6. Knight of three, B6. <coughs> Queen's Indian defense, A3. All right. Kasparov, Petrosian, line. Bishop g5. So knight c3, the main move. Bishop g5 is also completely playable, I guess. So let's just play simple move bishop e7 without much thinking. Do know. And h6. If I castle here, then d5 might be a problem. Might be not. So d5, e d5, c d5, knight e5, knight takes d5, bishop takes h4, knight takes h4, queen takes h4, knight takes c7, trapping the rook on a8. And the king is safe, absolutely. So if I want to prevent d5, I have to play d7, d5. And it leads to the transposition to the queen's gambit declined or something. Yeah, maybe. Let's try it. That was my opening when I was a kid. So I played queen's gambit declined. Yeah, it feels like that. Absolutely. One of the lines. But with the inclusion of a3 move, which is not typical. Of course, it is typical later on when white prepares b4, let's say. But usually white avoids playing a3 and queen's gambit declined at the early stage of the game. That's my point. So let us just castle. Cd5. And here there is usually a choice between taking with the knight, simplifying the position, or just taking with the pawn intending to have this pattern with hanging pawns after c7, c5 at some point. Let's take with the pawn. Let's play c5. Let's try to be active with black here. There was an interesting idea for white to play b4 after cd5, ed5, kind of typical stuff as well. But of course, this position is also very typical and playable, hence. So, knight e7. Rook e1. Okay, let's also put the rook on this open file. For white it is closed, but at some point white can come up with e3, e4, I think. So I have to be ready to fight for this file as well. A6 is not necessarily good if white takes on c5 and I recapture with a pawn. But at the moment when white didn't make the final decision, I can change my mind at some point and play c4 followed by b5. So it can be just a waste of time, of course. This move a7, a6, but it's kind of forces white to make a decision as soon as possible about the pawn structure in the center. For example, here. 
I think now it makes sense for me to play c4 followed by b5. Yeah, let's try it. b5. Grabbing the space. I don't think white is well prepared to play e4 right now. Just typical thing. So he has to spend the time to prepare this. And now I have a feeling that I have a chance to play knight e4 simply. Bishop e7, queen e7, then something takes e4. I take on e4 with the pawn. And well, position is double edged, of course, but I think I control the things. So let's prevent this knight e4. Sorry, with, let's prevent this e4 with the help of knight e4. That's my idea here. So bishop on h4 is heading, so feels like this exchange is forced. And e4 is protected as well as d5. I want to put my knight on f6 if necessary to support my knight on e4. And having this uh, pawn majority on the queen side, of course my long-term plan is to prepare a5, b4, something like this. So at the very least, black is not worse here. I'm pretty much sure. Okay, a4 doesn't create a threat of taking on b5 because b5 is protected. And weakens b4 square, which I can use maybe even right away. So queen b4, uh, the only problem with that after a b5, a b5, and exchange on a8, uh, I might be not ready to play rook a8, but I can take with the bishop. Um, yeah, it looks fine. So my intuition says that uh, I have to start with knight f6, just protecting e4 additionally. But it feels like I'm fine just to play queen b4 immediately. Why not? So if white plays queen g4 or tries something tactical connected with taking on e4 and then queen g4, I have knight f6 tempo move. So I guess I'm fine here with this immediate queen b4. Looks very, very good square for queen. Knight to f1. Okay, I can take on b2 or not. That's an interesting question. Uh, it's not clear if my queen will be necessarily trapped there, but I don't want to take this risk, so I'll just start with the knight f6 normal move. And later on we will see, so... For example, here I have a bunch of prophylactic moves. Just limiting the activity of white's pieces. Anyway, to protect the b2 pawn, white will have to make an ugly move, like for b1, for instance. So now I just blockade d4 in advance and protect c4. And after this, I think I can take and continue with this b4. This looks like a good transformation. One more move improving my position <clears throat> i don't have to hurry up so let's bring all the pieces to the game just grab an f4 square maybe wasn't that necessary but why not and now let's try this to start with Centralization, kind of. Don't know if it is good or bad. It looks just fine.
Okay, so after a takes b5, I just play b3, and after bishop d1, I just take on b5 and collect everything here. Um, I do believe that I could have uh, played much better uh, in the endgame stage. For example, somewhere here, for instance here, I could have played this typical c3 move, um, having in mind uh, bc3, b3. This sort of transformation after uh, bishop here, I just play bishop c4. Uh, for example, after king g1, I just play knight e5. Uh, in my opinion, with a complete domination, but <clears throat> I had no enough time to evaluate the things correctly. Mm, everything looked very attractive, but uh, I was not really sure about the uh, b3 move here, so I didn't want to define the position uh, that soon uh, to avoid um, mm, this sort of uh, stronghold, maybe. I don't know. Uh, maybe it is still uh, possible to win with black, maybe not. But I didn't want to uh, actually give my opponent a chance to come up with something like this. So that's why I wanted to maneuver a bit, um, so to improve positions of my pieces to a maximum, and only at the proper moment to come up with this c3 followed by b3. So for white, uh, I think it was much better uh, to try something like uh, b4 here. It's a typical thing, I guess. c takes d5, e takes d5, and then b4. Um, intending to uh, make it make it simply harder for, for black to play c7, c5, because in this case, in many key, in many positions with isolated pawns, um, well, I don't remember, of course, the theory of this line. Maybe b4 is premature in this particular case, in this concrete position. Uh, for instance, after c5, the bc5, bc5, there is something like rook b1, which is not clear, attacking the bishop on b7. Something very similar happened many times uh, in uh, matches between Kasparov and Karpov. Don't remember exactly the concrete position, but something like this. I mean, this type of positions definitely uh, showed up there. Um, so b4 is kind of a typical thing. So if black undermines the pawn with the a5, then white plays b5. So again, uh, white's idea is uh, just like in uh, Karsbad pawn structure to provoke some weakening. Uh, now we can see that d5 is kind of abandoned because uh, whenever black plays c6, well, white takes and d5 uh, uh, will be not typically isolated because the d file is... Uh, closed, but uh, d5 will definitely lack a defense because there will be no pawn being able to protect it. That's the idea behind b4. And if black plays c5, then after bc4, bc5, bc5, there is usually a possibility to uh, come up with the position with the isolated pawn on d5, something like this. Uh, but this position is also playable, so after c5, castles, uh, knight d7, rook e1. Uh, well, I guess the best way for white to play is just to define the pawn structure as soon as possible. Uh, to take on c5, and after bc5 we have this classic pattern with hanging pawns d5 and c5. So uh, white can try to attack these pawns with the help of rook c1, then if possible knight to a4, just trying to provoke the movement of one of the pawns, and uh, once one of the pawns moves, uh, actually the square that it controls at the moment becomes weak, and white can occupy it. And also there are typical plans like preparation of the b4 or e4 at some point. Uh, so just playing this passive, um, well, I don't think that it gives you anything. So after c4, bishop c2, and b5, I already felt very good, especially after I managed to play knight e4, so everything was fine. Black solved his problems, and the rest was just enjoying the game uh, with uh, slightly uh, more space in the position, right? Okay, <coughs> let's go further. Um, Let's come back to the normal order of challenges, and it happened that Shellingford was the first one today to challenge me, so accept. And let us focus on white pieces. Wow. So Karakan or what? Let's do it. Yeah, Karakan. Okay, so let's play. This main line, bishop f5, knight g3. Last time I was very close to winning the game, but I spent a lot of time 
on very simple moves. So that's in the end in a winning position. I actually missed the thread and lost. Bishop e7. Okay, so black doesn't play queen to b6 prior to playing bishop e7, and that is an improvement, of course. Because now there is no longer this play based on knight e5 and then sacrifice somewhere on f7 or g6, something like this. So now I have to focus on something else. For example, knight to e4 is a move here. There is usually a possibility just to play c4 followed by bishop c3. So let's try this. So knight to c5 isn't a threat because of d takes c5 attacking the queen. So I guess I have the time to bring the bishop to c3 here. Castles. Okay. So now the knight has to go here. I want to prepare something like g4 maybe, if it is possible. Most likely it is not the main line against queen b6. Set up. But I just want to play normal chess. I don't want to spend a lot of time here. I do believe that my opponent knows the theory much better than I do. So what about d5 now? Looks very promising. If I don't blunder anything. Okay. And just bishop to f6. Very nice. Very nice, to be honest. Yeah, it feels like Black like solved his problems. Okay. Yeah, this position is very comfortable for black, to be honest. So, I don't have anything here at all. So, I still have to learn Karakhan. Very simple play for black. Amazing. Just amazing how it's simple to get into trouble in Karakhan. So do I have anything here? Anything more or less active? I don't know. Queen C2 looks very passive, but at very least it protects everything. I don't know. Mm. Have no idea. Let's try it. Yeah. Annoying. That is annoying. I don't like my position at all. So if queen c3, then knight e4 decides, because then knight takes f2, grabbing the material. 
yeah, very bad game. Very bad game for me. Very successful. <sighs> successful game for my opponent. I'm just paralyzed here, so... I don't even know what to do in this position, so I'm completely lost, I think. I will try to fight a bit. I don't know how. Hmm. No time, position is just lost. Don't know how to fight. <laughs> In such a bad situation. So. And no defense, right? Yeah, resign. Very bad game. There is nothing even to command because I was, um, yeah, in a bad situation already after the opening. So after this, c4, rook d8, bishop c3, castles. Most likely this knight e4 is not a move here. In this particular case, probably it's better to put the queen on e2 somewhere and try to play knight to e5, this plan. Um, yeah, I'm pretty much sure that knight e4 is no longer uh, promising here because I can't come up with this quick attack g4, g5, but it just undermines the center immediately and so on. Okay, thanks a lot for this experience. Again, you just reminded me that... Uh, I have to learn this fucking Karakhan. Um, let us continue. So, who's next? Where's this challenge from PHC? I saw that uh, he was the second, but there is no longer this challenge on the list. So, I will accept Azure Mists 1. And Black Pieces. E4, E5. I just keep playing. My normal openings today. Azure Mist usually plays this uh, slow Italian. And d3, I play a6 here. h6. This way. Just limiting the activity of white's pieces. So g5 is very important square for the bishop, for the knight, for various pieces. h3. Can I just try d5 here instead of this d6, which I usually play? Let's try it. And there is an interesting question, where to put the bishop? I guess a7 should be just fine. Hmm. 
And now, bishop to e6, followed by queen d7, looks very natural. Why not? Let's do it. And queen d7 again looks very natural follow up. Except for it is a blunder, my goodness. <laughs> And so typical blunder that is, yeah. <sighs> Something is wrong with me today. Just plain bullshit. Maybe I'm still fine though. I mean, I have some resources if Bishop takes h6 I had f5 that's what I actually saw soon after I played queen d7 so there's bishop h6 then bishop takes d5 and then there is a fork on f6 whatever bishop takes h6 maybe it is not that clear uh, after f7 f5 yeah maybe it wasn't a blunder who knows who knows I don't really want to play f6 here, to be honest, so let's play rook e8. So I think I have some slight pressure here because I'm a bit better developed at the moment and, uh, well, have a bit more space in general. This bishop d2 looks a bit awkward. So maybe bishop f4, sorry, knight to f4. Bishop takes f4, e takes f4, takes everything on e6, then knight e4, what is that? Might be an interesting position to play for both sides. Bishop takes h3 here. No, it doesn't work. 100%. Knight to a5. Okay, this drops e5 pawn. Now, all this... Is bullshit. I know what is going on. I'm still I'm still thinking about the previous game. Okay, let's forget about it. But it became kind of tradition, a very bad one. Every episode just play against Shelling, he plays Karakhan, and I lose with White. What the fuck? I have to change this. Somehow. I don't know how, but I have to. So now I have a bishop against the knight, but my pawn structure is worse. But there is a pawn on d3, which is vulnerable. Because it protects the knight e4 and can't move in the vast majority of cases 
So let's bring another rook to e8, exerting additional pressure on this knight e4. And if queen goes to d2, for example, I guess f5 just traps the knight. So immediate f5 was also playable, but after knight e4 to d2, my rook on e6 was hanging. In case of rook e1, knight e1 protects the d3 pawn. And now, as I said before, I think f5 just wins the knight in the center of the board because it has no moves to go away. Okay. Kind of extra material now. Very good. Now let's activate all the pieces on the keen side. Despite white has a pawn majority there, I guess I'm better there because I have more resources. Simply extra attacking unit. Extra minor piece. Rook d1, rook g6. Attacking with all my pieces. Queen d7, I think queen takes f3, decides. I can also take on g2 first, so it's absolutely lost here. Okay, so... I don't actually know what was wrong with white's approach. So d5, e5, knight e5. Um, I never play this way, but uh, in the vast majority of cases, white uh, actually goes away with the bishop. That's why I don't play d5, because it is not a tempo move even. Here it was, and I just, just decided to develop my pieces slightly more active if compared to uh, my usual play with d6. So here I thought of uh, bishop h6, but then realized that f5 is possible, because if I take the bishop, then bishop d5, and white wins because of this uh, fork on f6. So f5 should be played here. Mm. And what is that? Probably it's still winning for white. I mean, bishop goes away. Let us say bishop g5. And after f takes e4, d takes e4. Look at this crap. I mean, from black's perspective, d5 knight is hanging. If knight goes to b6, then queen takes d7, bishop is pinned. So knight takes d7, bishop takes e6, finishes the game. Uh, if knight goes away somewhere else except for b6, well, queen takes d7, winning a queen. If knight goes to f6, it's just a transposition. So it looks like, yeah, bishop h6 was possible. Yeah, uh, bishop h6, so queen d7 was a blunder, I guess. A very typical one, because it is one of the most common traps uh, in such a situation uh, when you already played h6 and f6 is kind of weakened. Right? Right. So, yeah, queen d7, bishop h6. Do I have anything better than playing f5? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah, I guess I have nothing here. So, why does simply pawn up after that? So f5, bishop goes away somewhere, I have to protect my stuff, and uh, as I said, at the very least, white is just a pawn up. Maybe I missed something here, but it looks like that at first glance. Okay, uh, let's continue. Let's continue, here is Kramnik student, accept. White pieces. Let's see what Kramnik student prepared with black, because usually we play uh, the way that uh, Kravnik student receives white pieces against me. Now he's playing with black, so Sicilian. Okay. D6, D4. And just bishop e2. Accurate approach. e6, okay. 
My opponent doesn't want to play Knight Dwarf, which is probably good. So let's play Shevening and Classical One. So this all goes almost automatic. Rook e8, typical move here. Let's put the bishop on f3. Also typical thing. And now... Am I already good to go with the g4? Good question. Or just knight b3. Let's start with the knight b3. So black tries to save the time on the move bishop from d7 to c8. So a typical thing is to play bishop d7 to force me to play knight b3. And then once I play g4, black is uh more or less forced to play bishop c8 to have his d7 square so here as we can see black managed to save the time on this bishop c8 move so it's maybe very good for black but maybe this should stop me from playing this g4 g5 plan maybe not let us see so can i play e5 here D takes e5, f takes e5, knight takes e5, bishop goes to f4, pinning the knight. Well, it's better to do when uh, you have the knight on d4. Maybe it's still good here. Let's see, e5, d takes e5, bishop c6, queen c6, f takes e5, bishop b7. No, it doesn't look good for white. So e5, d5, f5, and then knight e5, that is the main position. I have to consider if I want to play e5. I don't believe it works. So let's put the queen on e1 instead. Bishop b7. Bishop is ready to occupy f6 if I play queen g3. Yeah, I achieved absolutely nothing here. It's a good preparation, my friend. So, what to do instead? Let's just wait a bit, I don't know. Okay, c2 is hanging, right? E4 is protected. But I have no time. So I have to be faster, much faster than before. I hope I don't blunder anything. This queen is under attack as well as the knight on b4. 
So it changes the situation quickly on the board. Instead of long maneuvering, we just start doing something really quick, dynamic and interesting. I still have a feeling that it's kind of a mistake for white to change the situation this way, but well, we'll see what is going on there. So for example, this simplification, queen takes e4, 96. I have to be fast. It's my main idea here because otherwise I'm lost in time. So now what to do? A4 is hanging, bishop b6. It's kind of interesting. So yeah, let's take on b6 with the bishop. Now I control the d file. And with the b4, I just um, create the c5 square for my bishop if necessary, which is also an important thing. All right, can g1 should be played. Just to, to bring the king to the dark square to avoid the complications with that bishop. Okay, what to do now? Rook a1, attacking the bishop. Um, how can I activate my position? I'm not sure. But okay. Let us start with something general. Might be lost on time, but all right. Five looks tempting now. Just making position not that clear, not that simple, maybe for black to play, but I think it's still equal. I maybe just slightly better, but it might be just not enough. Okay. Let's take it. Let's take this too. Let's activate the king as quick as possible. That is my only chance here. No time. Just no time. To think properly about this position. Okay. Let's bring all my pieces in active positions. Oops, there is a checkmate. Only nine seconds. <sighs> yeah, I accept the draw because I have no time whatsoever. Simply no time, right? So yeah, that should be a draw, of course. All right, very interesting setup. Very interesting setup. Um, so I don't remember how to react to this order of moves, of course. So a4 castles here, rook e8. Um, maybe somewhere here I made my first mistake or inaccuracy at least. Um, so after bishop f3, rook b8, maybe exactly here e5 is playable. That is an interesting stuff. So I don't know. It is a typical thing, but uh, the real analysis required usually to make a decision on such a move. So uh, I didn't analyze this position in details, uh, never ever, because it is not uh, what I usually play with white against d6, a6. Um, maybe it is playable here, maybe not. I don't know. Knight b3, as we can see, leads to uh, just a normal uh, position for black because black didn't play bishop d7, so black is not forced to play bishop c8 if I play g4. And black has uh, an extra tempo if compared to the main line with the bishop d7, but maybe still this g4 is okay. So only one tempo, probably not that important 
in fact, in this particular case. But okay, uh, anyways, let's keep playing. So the next was Sebi, except now we'll be playing with black, I think. Yep, black pieces. Let's go. Andrew Lopez. All right. So the main line, I guess. No, D3 here. Okay. Okay. Absolutely acceptable. C3. I should play D6 here. So I usually do exactly the same, like uh, in the line with the d3, d4. I don't know if it is a bad approach or not. It should be bad, in my opinion. So I just develop my pieces just like in Smyslov variation. Because sooner or later, white anyway plays uh, d3, d4. So why not? Ninety two rookie eight Bishop F eight. Just a typical play against all this stuff. And now what? I have to do something with this Bishop B three. I guess uh, since the knight is already on g3 and there is no 93-95 maneuver, I can actually uh, survive the weakening of the d5 square. So I'll play knight a5 intending to play c7, c5. Bishop c2 and c5. Grabbing the space and intending to put my queen on c7 and so on. Maybe d5 also playable here. I'm not quite sure. But it might be, especially after bishop e3. So d5, e5, knight e5, bishop goes away on d2. Do I have anything there? I'm not sure, but I feel I'm fine. After knight c6. Now let's try it. Come on. It's just a blitz, right? D4. Wow, that is very interesting. Okay. Well, E takes D4. Looks like obvious here because E4 is now hanging. Isn't it a blunder or something? I have no idea. Let us see. D takes E4 and that goes to E5. Leads to not very clear position, but I'm up a material, so should be just fine for black. Okay, let's take it and see. I don't think that white has enough for this missing material, so let's define the situation in the center first and foremost. Now what? 
Uh, knight c6 looks very solid. Attacking the knight e5, and then knight takes d7. Knight takes d7, and e4 it drops. Okay, maybe this cd4 was premature. Maybe c4 was better. Or something like this. I don't really know. It feels like I have to go away with the bishop e6. With the bishop d7 to e6, maybe. But then e4 drops, anyways. Well, maybe I made a mistake by playing cd4. Yeah, pity. Pity enough. Yeah. I'm completely puzzled here. Right, let's simplify position. Can't see anything better than that. Yeah, absolutely right. I just wanted to take on d4 here because I can't see anything better than that here. So if knight f6, queen f6, okay. Position should be absolutely equal. But I would have captured even with the queen on d4 if I wanted to equalize comfortably. Because this knight on d4 might be annoying. Yep, correct. Yeah. So opposing color bishops, absolutely equal material, should be just a draw. Unless white blunders something, so it's almost over. So my knight is hanging what to do, what to do, let's put it on c5. The last try to attack at least something in white's position. Oh, what is that? Giving me a pawn, but then, I don't know, maybe. Maybe it gives me a chance. I mean, I can protect the knight this ugly way. <clears throat> but it's still an extra material, right? So we can fight, but to fight it with uh, only 23 seconds on the clock, Will be very risky, but okay. Let's do the things. Let's give it a try. Come on. <laughs> All right.
Looks like my opponent also blundered something. So I will capture that. Come back. Oh my goodness, there's so many blunders from both sides. And I lost some time, right? Yeah, I lost some time. Okay, never mind. So, it was a good game. Um, the most interesting part was, of course, somewhere here when my opponent played d4. I can't believe it is a good idea, but uh looks like a playing playable thing right so i took on d4 took on d4 and then took <coughs> with the pawn maybe maybe it was much better for me to take with the knight who knows let's see knight takes e4 knight takes e4 d4 and then knight to e5 uh gives me a chance to occupy f5 square but then there is a typical thing like queen to h5 attacking the bishop and the pawn on f7 at the same time but I'm fine with playing a g6 here, I think, protecting everything, and d4 is hanging, so this is not a problem for black. So yeah, maybe knight takes e4 was interesting here, instead of d takes c4. But of course, white can play something like d4 takes c5, and, well, um, the position is unclear, because a lot of hanging pieces, a lot of hanging pieces. Uh, probably d5 was a bit premature here, so instead, I could have played a normal move like queen c7, let's say, um, just to prepare everything carefully. Um, I could have played rook to b8, intending to play b5, b4, also typical thing here. I could have played even before immediately here, also typical thing here. So fighting for dark squares, and if I do something like this, I can do something like knight c4, or even b3 at some point. So, yeah. As usual, this Rui Lopez position is quite uh, complicated. So it's not that simple usually to come up with the uh, good decision even uh, playing a classical game. Uh, what to say about the Blitz game? So you don't have the time. So uh, only intuition says what to do and what to avoid. And sometimes, well, your intuition works very bad. And that is what happened in this game uh, with me. All right. Uh, let us continue. Oh, pawn holder, my goodness, 3038. Let's try it. Let's try it. Uh, it's kind of challenge. Let's try to play good. So I lost two games already today, right? f3 all right let's play d5 king f2 what the fuck is going on on the board come on all right So, I'll just play normal moves, okay? For example, why not to play bishop c5 check right now? Well, this weakens f3 and light squares in general. Can I just play h5 here, then d4? Might be slightly annoying. So can I play d4 here? Of course I can. No one actually stops me from playing d4, grabbing a bit more space and creating a concrete threat of d4 takes e3. King goes back. Oh, very nice. Oh, I hate when uh, somebody plays like this. Kind of irritating, right? But it's a good strategy when you play blitz. So you just provoke your opponent. Uh, he starts feeling like... It feels like an obligation to win, but 
well, I don't care, so I will just play chess. So my opponent no longer has a chance to castle, so is it the time to play e4 here? Mm, can be a good idea for me. Why not? Grabbing slightly more space. Okay, bishop c4. So let's keep developing the pieces. Knight c6. Seriously now. Queen takes d4. King goes to g2. I don't get it. So, queen d4. Yeah, queen d4 is good. Why not? Very good active centralized queen. Now, if knight goes to e2, I will have e takes f3. So, rook to d8 looks very nice. Sorry. So, rook to d8, knight b5, queen d2, queen d2, rook d2. Then, no, let's play it. A6. A6 looks interesting. Just intending to play B5, trapping that bishop. Queen b2 is also a threat at some point, just attacking the knight. This knight is also limited, but there is a queen c1 defense, of course. All right, we will see. Queen c1. Mm -hmm. If I play b5, what is going on? c3. Queen goes away, bishop still has no squares to go away. Oh, this way. All right. I'll have extra material. So let's take the shit. So queen d2 now. Rook d1 leads to queen takes e2, so... Why not to simplify position this way? I have extra minor piece simply. Okay, let's put the bishop on e6. I don't under understand this. Come on. Seriously. My goodness. Just a minor piece up. What the fuck?
there is nothing to comment. <clears throat> Nothing to comment, actually. I'm really a bit, you know, angry. So this sort of play like F3, King, F2, it's okay for Blitz, it's okay, but playing, uh, I, I don't know, just years being a minor piece down, it's kind of, okay, I'm not a patser, you know, not to convert it after all. All right, it's your uh, decision after all. The next is Kurgan 021, accept. Um, well, okay, you're welcome. <clears throat> C4, E6. Knight of 3, B6. G3 and C6. So, I'm kind of forcing my opponent to play Catalan. And I guess he's not against. All right. So, next move I will play d5 and we will have a transposition to the close Catalan. So, knight c3, one of the most popular moves here. d5. b3. All right, so. Usually, why play something like knight e5 or knight e2, slowly preparing e4? Or it's better to say, uh, intending to play e4, in fact, as fast as possible, right? But okay, b3 is also playable, no questions. Um, so I will put my knight on d7 now, just covering e5 square.
queen c2. And now bishop to a6, right? Bishop to a6, attack in c4. Yeah, why not? Let's do it. So when the knight is on c3 and b3 is already played, a6 usually becomes a very good square for a bishop. So counter-attacking. Now if white plays e4 at some point, of course, I'll capture c4 pawn. Not e4. If white spend the time on uh, protecting c4 pawn, then I will have a chance to play rook c8, completing the development and preparing c6, c5. That's the idea. For example, right now, rook c8, I guess, is absolutely playable. But white wants to play e4, so maybe it makes sense for me to counterattack in the center immediately with the help of b6, b5, right? Which is another idea behind playing bishop a6, by the way. cb5, now cb5. It looks like I'm ready to go with the b5, b4. And it feels like white's pieces are slightly misplaced because, yeah, e2 was hanging, by the way. So after b4, I just unleash my bishop and uh, it attacks e e2 pawn. Now it is protected, but what white is going to play against rook c8? So let's start with the rook c8. Okay, queen b2. Now b4. Looks just natural. Why not? Grabbing the space. And this bishop c1 is struggling actually to find a square <clears throat> to be developed. What about this knight a4? Um, I can exert further pressure just playing bishop b5 and queen a5. Or bishop takes a4, knight b6, something like this. Do I have anything better than that? I'm not sure. Um, I don't know. Queen c7 followed by queen c2 only helps white, I guess. So let's play, you know, bishop b5. It's a typical thing, after all, when you play b4. So why not? Now I can come up even with the transformation. So I can take on a4 first, then take on e4, exchange on e4, knight goes to b6, attacking a4, then something like bishop f6 is possible to play. Um, I can also start with just exchange on e4 and then bishop f6. Uh, this looks a bit more logical. I can also just ignore this e4 move. I can play knight b6 immediately. Um, or bishop takes a4 and knight b6, something like this, attacking the pawn. So delaying this decision on the pawn structure in the center a bit. There are a lot of uh, really uh, promising continuations, I would say. I don't know which is better at the moment. I don't have a lot of time, so <clears throat> I have to decide quickly now. I just want my opponent to keep struggling with the bishop on c1 so that I will avoid taking on e4. So let's take this and knight b6. And then we will see. So if e5, okay, I no longer have a problem with the center. I mean, bishop g2 remains uh, limited. I also think that maybe uh, something connected with the exchange on e4 was better. Then this bishop a4, knight b6. For at least I win some material, I think. 
after knight a4, queen b3, queen a5, but then e d5, and my bishop on e7 is hanging. On the other hand, there is rook c3, intermediate move. Okay, let's try it. Looks interesting. Yeah, queen a5. ED5 would be played. <clears throat> or not. All right. Let's take it. And now I think I can simplify the situation this way. So I have an extra pawn, right? Why not? But I have to be faster than I am. I have only 40 seconds. <clears throat> 40 seconds on the clock, extra pawn, this isolated queen's pawn. Some perspectives of attacking it at some point. This g6 was awful. Now d5 is possible or not? No, not yet. Not yet. I still control d5, I mean. I have no idea why I played g6. I wanted to limit the activity of the light screwed bishop. Which wasn't necessary. 100% wasn't necessary whatsoever. Anyways. That's the point. Rook takes b4, bishop takes f2. That was the idea. Um, all right, one more check. That's yeah, lost. Okay, um, it's a very interesting game. A very interesting game, but I think I solved my problem very soon after the opening started. So already here I felt like all right, because um, this is not the most dangerous setup for black. I do believe that uh, instead of playing b3 here, it's better to do something like knight e5 or knight e2, and then after bishop b7 to play e4, which leads to this complicated position after dc4, knight c4, bishop a6, b3, b5, knight e3, b4, everything is forced, knight e2, um, and here black can take on e2, queen e2, queen d4, bishop b2, queen b6, and okay, black has an extra pawn, but white has a pair of bishops, and this pawn means uh, not much here, because uh, the pawn structure is compromised. I do believe this is the critical line here, uh, having this uh, order of moves uh, with uh, b6, c6, c6, and then d5. Um, that is, of course, not the only line. Uh, when white plays uh, knight e5, of course, he's more or less uh, forced to play e4, because it is the main idea. I mean, for black, it is not the only line, so there are some other possibilities, so black can keep this position, uh, just protecting d5, but um, I don't think that black has, uh, anyway, anything better than d5 takes c4. If I place b3 here, as we can see, I just play knight e7 controlling e5 square, and I have this counterattack with the bishop a6, where after, uh, I'm just fine already, right? Because b6, b5 uh, is a threat, d5 takes c4 is a threat, uh, and simple rook c8 followed by c5 is also the threat. So I just choose the correct way of reacting, uh, depending on white, uh, on what white does here, right? So the knight e2, I noticed that e2 is not well protected, so b5 becomes great. So usually white should react with the c4, c5, but here it doesn't work because of b4 attacking the knight, and when the knight goes away, just grab the pawn on e2. So white is deprived of this possibility, 
which means I'm fine. Uh, probably it makes sense for white not to take on b5. After taking on b5, the c file becomes open and black benefits. So maybe it was better to start with rook to e1. And here after bc4, bc4 anyways, um, as we may notice, um, I don't want to take on c4 because c6 is hanging and so on. Um, I don't think black has problems here because uh, at very least there is a plan of playing knight b6 then occupying c4. There is a plan of playing rook b8 controlling the b file. There is a possibility to put the queen on a5. So black is fine here in fact. But uh, white is not worse. I just believe that after cb5, cb5 white is simply worse. Uh, I have a lot of different threats including b4, including rook c8. So after rook e1, b4 is no longer that dangerous so I played rook to c8. Maybe after queen b2, I missed the possibility to um, grab the initiative with the help of bishop b4 or even queen to a5. I don't know what is better here. Maybe queen to a5. And after this move, the knight is hitting and maybe, I don't know, knight to b1 or something. Um, I don't know. I simply have no idea what to what to do here. If this knight goes to b1 or d1, then I can play b4 at some point, and I will control the whole board. So it feels like black is already better, at least the development is much better, and so on. All right. So let's go further. Let's go further. Let's play, uh, I guess, one more game. Uh, I guess it's too late already. So yeah, here we go. And again with black. So my friend from Spain, are you going to make a move or not? So let's wait a bit, maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, aboard. Uh, the next one, the next one, except. Mike Kalinin. I'm playing with black, e4, e5. Let's go. Um, d4, the scotch. Knight e4, knight f6. Knight c6, b6, c6. So the main line, right? e5, queen e7. Queen e2 or something. Yep, 95. And knight c3, that is strange. Usually why play c4, of course. Knight c3 can't be that great, because at the very least I can damage the pawn structure. So I'll do this, I'll take it. Now, what to do now? What could be the best reply. Queen c5 looks tempting, attacking c3 immediately. There is also an interesting possibility to play a5, preparing bishop to a6. White avoids it, and that's why probably queen c5 was better than what I did. Anyways, this position should be safe for black to play. Yeah, but why didn't I play just queen c5? Have no idea. My mistake. My mistake. All right, let's keep developing the pieces. Oh, my Kalinin is not premium. Or not? Yeah, he's not premium. Come on. Yeah, I'll play one more game after this. Sorry, guys. Somehow I forgot to check. 
Sorry, Mad King. That's true. No, well, sometimes it happens. <laughs> I mean, I was pretty much sure that every challenge was from a premium member that I forgot to check. Oh, that's the sign. I'm late. Not I'm late, but it's late. Okay, you can hear that. I'm just not focused properly. All right, position is not that easy to, to play with black. Let's put the rook to the E file. Yeah, everybody already noticed that he's not a premium member. That's true. That's why I will play one more game. So I wanted to finish with this one, but well, I have to fix the problem. Let's grab the space. <laughs> Dunno. Let's try to get rid of this bad bishop. All right. Let us play this quick. So. I have to control light squares somehow, so queen e6. c4, okay, rook c5 attacking c4 pawn should bring me some extra material. I mean, c4 drops, right? Come on. c4 drops. Rook b1. Okay. Maybe my opponent wants to counterattack. So c7 might be his target. Okay, not a problem. Let's simplify position. Let's play quickly. So c2 is Henning. Now a3 is Henning. Rook to a1. Okay, rook to b8. Intending to occupy b3 square. Hmm. Okay. I will accept this sacrifice.
What is going on here? I have a lot of uh, extra pawns, right? And there is a checkmate. Okay, so uh, let's get to another challenger. Sorry for this, guys. Um, yeah, it happens. So big boy is uh, the next one. So let's play big boy. And again with black. It's a crazy stuff. B3. All right. Knight C6. Knight F6. Just controlling the center and developing the pieces. That's the point. And D4. I think I can comfortably equalize after taking on D4 and playing D5. And I will do this. Why not? D7, D5. I want a refund for my premium membership now. Why? <laughs> Why? Okay, check. My idea is to force white to play C3, reducing the pressure on e5. And now bishop d6 should be just fine. Okay, castles. And now let's exert some pressure. So bishop g4. By the way, uh, to all those guys who actually want to complain about the selection of uh, challenges, once again, I just play three games at the beginning of the show against guys I didn't play before. Then I just get the normal order of challenges. If you were the first to challenge or you let the challenge uh, actually uh, early enough prior to the start of the show, you have a good chance to play. It is already the end of the show, and by the way, I play uh, Big Boy. I didn't play this guy before. So, you have a chance to play. So, don't tell me you have no chance to play during Bounder Blitz show or something like this. Come on. It was discussed many times already. So what to do in this position? I don't know. Knight e4 looks interesting, so let's play knight to e4. Bishop e2. All right. So now, rook to e8, exert an additional pressure. Looks very natural. So let's play rook to e8. I control the center very well here. I guess. I have a slight advantage because my pieces are much more active, I would say. Okay, c4. Can I play something crazy like bishop a3 here? Bishop a3, bishop takes knight c3, then takes e2. I don't think I get much. So let us start with the bishop f4 move, another move that exerts some pressure in white's position. Bishop f4 takes. So takes with the pawn was my initial idea. Now d4 is under attack. Hmm. Knight to e5. 
Okay, knight takes e5 is very interesting, as well as just bishop e2. So bishop e2, knight takes c6, bishop takes d1, knight takes d8. Is it playable for white? Um, I think yes. It's okay, more or less. Should I take on e5 simply here? So knight takes e5, d takes e5, then what? Then bishop takes e2, queen e2, bishop takes e5, bishop e5, rook e5, something like this. So this gives me an extra pawn, right? I don't think I have some tactics based on bishop h2 or something, so... Yeah, let's just take on e5 here. If bishop takes g4, then maybe queen to h4, or... Yeah, or maybe bishop takes h2 even. No, bishop takes h2 is too much because there is bishop h3, but maybe bishop can stay here and I can play queen h4 now. Queen is sort of a checkmate. And if, well, there is at least h3, right? So maybe it's better for me to play knight e3 now. Attacking the bishop, but I achieved nothing. Well, I missed something, definitely. I missed something. Okay, let's play this crap. Oh, this is interesting. So now I have this move. Really nice one. My bluff just worked well. After queen h4, I had a chance just to play g3, I think. That was fine. Now it's lost. Now it's just lost. <clears throat> Yeah, so it was very promising position, but then it somehow uh, became very dry after numerous exchanges. Maybe I missed something, but uh, the interesting moment is here. So after queen h4, uh, there is a possibility, first of all, just to play h3, protecting the bishop and uh, preventing the checkmate. And I don't think I have anything here, anything serious. So just a few threats. And what is interesting, g3 was also playable. So my queen is under attack, I don't have a time to play knight takes g4, so I probably have to take on g4, where after you just take on e5. My queen is hanging now, um, so I have to take on d1, rook takes e1, bishop takes e5. Okay, I win a pawn, but after this, this, and rook d7, I think one has a sufficient compensation because of this activity. So if I play rook c8, then rook d1, creating sort of rook d8, or rook c7 at the moment is possible because I have a weakened back rank. And well, this gives you good chances to fight. Bishop h3 was a mistake, of course. Just played knight f3 and that's all. So, um, let's play one more, in fact. So, there is h bones um, from Chile, uh, the guy I've never played before as well. So. That will be definitely the last game for today. show. And I'm playing with black. Let's go, my friend. Because one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Sorry. The next one. Challenges and yeah. Drew Schoenberger. Accept. I'm playing with black. Knight f6, d5, e6, 
Bishop e7, castles, and knight c6. Aronian's idea, or at least he's one of the experts here, e5. So the difference between having the bishop on g4, like in the main line, and here is that uh, black has a chance to put it on a6 at some point, which is, in my opinion, quite interesting. Quite interesting stuff to do. So let's try it right now. Something like this. Maybe it's too much. Sometimes the bishop simply occupies the normal position on e6. Also an interesting idea. But here it is placed also not that bad, right? Just exerting the pressure along this diagonal pin in the knight, creating some nasty threats like queen e6 at some point. Why not? Um... Should I play a4, grabbing even more space? <clears throat> b5, b4, well, I don't think it is a good idea to play it right now. So maybe after some preparation. Let's put the queen on e6. <clears throat> At the moment, it looks like the most natural continuation, exerting additional pressure on this knight c4. Andre, will you do your Banter Blitz YouTube show again? Yes, of course. I have to come back to the normal rhythm of life after this vacation. And of course, I'll come back to my own banters for sure. So B3, B5, and then B4. Interesting stuff. Or just, I don't know, keep on developing the pieces like Rook D8 and so on. Let's make it slightly more dynamic because it's too late, right? Let us play something quick, dynamic, interesting, entertaining, and so on. I want to play b5, then b4, and then take on c3. If I play c4, then I have d4 squared to occupy. Something like this. Very simple idea. Let's go. Mm, all right, let's take. I took the pawn and grabbed the d4 square. Very important achievement. So now I can take e4 pawn if I want. But well, I'm not sure if it is a good idea because there are some problems along this diagonal, I guess. So maybe it makes sense for me to start with this move. Creating a concrete threat of c2 and protecting pawn c3. Looks like I'm just much better developed here. Andre, third try, training Tuesday, 7.30 Central European time on Tuesday. Yes, of course, just as usual. Sorry, it's why Jose X didn't see your question. But nothing changes, nothing changes in this sense. I think I can win the material after C2. Sorry guys for uh, not communicating with you today because I'm pretty much focused on what is going on on the board. Mm, I didn't see the chess board for a long time. <laughs> I'm kind of very hungry in the chess sense. So I'm just playing with pleasure or something like this. Um, all right. <clears throat> Queen takes d1. Um, 
There are a lot of different possibilities I can take on b4 with the knight if I want. Yeah, let's take it. Why not? So extra exchange, if I'm not mistaken, and I'm not, and kind of extra pawn in addition. Very good. And I control the situation on the board very well. So just a question of time and good technique to win this. I don't have the time <laughs> and my technique is not that great at the moment, so everything is possible here. Knight c2, all right, I think even c5 is great here, just protecting the knight on b4. b3 was hanging, by the way. I could have captured that. But I guess the way I play this also looks fine. Now I can take on c2 with the knight. I think with the knight is a bit more accurate. I just attack the rook, so knight c2 is forced, which means what? Which means that there is still a problem with the p. And I can focus on the attack along the B file, because B3 is very, very weak. And I will grab it with pleasure next move. But after Bishop C5 can change my mind, so Rook C8 is also interesting here. So I'll just play Rook C8. Rook B3 was also possible, followed by Rook C3, by the way. But Rook C8 looks swinging on the spot, right? Or maybe I just overestimate my position, I don't know. A takes b4, rook a8. Rook a8. Bishop takes b4. And rook goes back to c8, winning the game. Let's do it. Takes, takes. b3 is a threat. Queen b4 is now possible in the view of bishop takes c2. And now I just attack the knight, which is pinned, and there is no suitable defense. So I'm up a rook after this. All right. All right. Sorry, there is a checkmate very soon. Mm, let's do this. Uh, rook h1, right? If I'm not mistaken, should be just a checkmate in three. Check. And this checkmate. Okay, um, very interesting game. I think after uh, b6, uh, what has to play something else? Um, because knight c4 gives me a chance to play this bishop a6. That is exactly what I want to achieve here. Um, and also queen e2, in my opinion, is not uh, the best move here. So it's better to put the queen on c2 as far as I remember, followed by rook d1 and knight f1, knight e3 or knight c4, something like this. So. Maybe even knight c4 immediately is playable here after a5, attacking e5. It was one of the games uh, that was played by Anish Giri with white, but, well, actually, uh, it ended in a draw, which is not a surprise, right? <laughs> but still, knight c4 is interesting if you don't want to uh, come up with this um, mass exchange in the center. Probably queen c2 deserves attention preparing knight c4. 
uh, carefully and protect an E4 so with the same ideas, right? Mm. And also A4 is kind of typical move here. Yeah. Mm. There is no much difference, I mean, between all these uh, possibilities. I think Queen C2 is the best one. In fact, because you don't uh, put your queen on the same diagonal potentially with the bishop, so you have less problems with this uh, pin. So your knight is uh, much more active and flexible in this case. Um, all right, all right. Mm, thanks a lot for your attention today. Um, I think it was not uh, that great as usual just because of this uh, huge break, right? I'm not at my best shape, uh, but uh, well, it's uh, already not that bad if compared to very last episodes because I managed to uh, actually uh, recover after uh, the accident uh, I got into uh, several weeks ago. I also um, actually took some rest um, and uh, now I come back with new power, let's call it this way. Um, so all the premium members are welcome as usual um, next Tuesday to our training show. Um, we will come up with the versatile chess training uh, to start with and then uh, during next episode I will think of uh, new material so maybe I'll pick up some uh, ideas from the discussion on our farms. Um, have a nice weekend, uh, yeah take, take a rest as well as uh, I did uh, during the last two weeks. Well, it was just like a yeah, fantastic uh, portion of uh, fresh air. Uh, and uh, once again, I was really touched uh, by your kind support uh, during this period of time. Um, so all these forums, all these messages were just super. Thanks a lot. See you very soon. Bye bye. Take care.